Good morning, boys and girls. I'm Miss Lydia from the Boston Library. Thank you for joining me for story time today. Today, we are reading some of my favorite sheep stories. So we're gonna start with this one by Nancy Shaw called Sheep in a Jeep. Beep, beep. Sheep in a Jeep on a hill that's steep. Uh-oh, the Jeep won't go. Sheep leap to push the Jeep. Sheep shove, sheep grunt. Sheep don't think to look up front. Jeep goes splash, Jeep goes thud. Jeep goes deep in gooey mud. Sheep tug. Sheep shrug. Sheep yelp. Sheep get help. Who do you think they're going to get to help them? Jeep comes out. The sheep shout. Sheep cheer. Oh dear, the driver sheep forgets to steer. Jeep in a heap. They hit a tree. The sheep weep. Sheep sweep the heap. Jeep for sale. Cheap. Our next book is called Wally Does Not Want a Haircut by Amanda Driscoll. Can you tell which one is Wally? Wally did not need a haircut. His hair was perfectly fine. Sure, it tripped him up a tad, gathered bits of greenery, and made hoedowns a little hazardous. And Wally did miss hugging his mama. His hair's too big, he can't even hug his mom. Still, Wally did not need a haircut, and nobody could make him get one. High time for a haircut, Wally, said mama. The scissors went swicka swicka. Wally winced. The shears went buzz buzz and Wally wiggled. Now hold real still and Wally went haywire. I see you hiding Wally said mama. Don't worry little lamb haircuts don't hurt. Watch me she said and soon mama's hair looked ooh la la. Check this out Wally said the sheepdog and soon sheepdog sported a stylish new do. Before long, all the animals joined in. Shears zippity zip zipped, scissors snippity snip snipped. Goats wore top knots, bulls wore braids, and the horses rocked mohawks. Wally watched warily. Cows got curls, donkeys donned updos, and the yak sported spikes. Even the pigs wore wigs. Let's party, hollered the animals. Everyone danced the haircut hoedown. Everyone except Wally. Mama peered at Wally's side. I'd love to dance with my favorite partner, she said. Wally grinned and tried to move, but his hair was tangled in the hay. He squirmed and he shimmied and he stretched I'm stuck, he yelled. Don't panic, said Mama, we'll get you out. All the animals helped. They used horsepower, a battering ram, and dogged determination, but Wally's hair held. Then Wally spied the scissors. He had no other choice. Uh, Mama, will you cut my hair? Wally said sheepishly. With pleasure, said Mama. Wally took a deep breath. Mom sniffed. It didn't hurt. She snipped some more. Not bad, said Wally. Snip, snip, snippity snip, snip, snip a snip a snip a. I'm free, said Wally, dancing the trimmed up two step. Wally twirled without tripping, glided without gathering greenery, and became 
the hero of the hoedown. Then he did the one thing that he had missed the most. Wally hugged his mama. Our next book is called Tinka by Rainey Doheny. Down at the end of Cokesbury Road, there was a quiet old place called McEwen's Farm. Farmer McEwen had five sheep, Myla, Melda, Nyla, Welda, and Tinka, who happened to be the smallest sheep anyone in those parts had ever seen. She was about the size of a cupcake. Once a year, all the sheep would line up for shearing. The big sheep would produce a huge fleece of wool, enough to make a basket full of yarn. But Tinka's fleece made only enough yarn to knit a tiny sweater, fit for a hamster or an egg cozy. At night, when it was time to sleep, all the sheep lay down together in their bed of hay, all but Tinka, who slept in her own little bed in the corner of the barn. Can't I sleep with the rest of you guys? She'd beg. I'm a sheep too. No, Teensy Tinka, you're too small. We'd surely squish you, the others would answer. And that's when Tinka would feel so alone that she would cry herself to sleep. But Tinka did have one friend, Sooty the Crow. He always knew how to make Tinka laugh. Every year, on the faraway hill, a huge purple spider would appear. And every year, the sheep would celebrate because it meant that spring had arrived. As the days and the grass grew longer, they'd imagine what it would be like to visit the spider, though they knew that was impossible. After all, neither Myla nor Melda, Nyla nor Welda, could get over Farmer McEwen's fence. Poor little Tinka wasn't even tall enough to see the spider. Oh, please tell me, what does he look like? She asked the sheep one spring morning. He's beautiful, bawed Myla. And gigantic, mawed Welda. Too bad you're too small to see him, snorted Melda. Yeah, it's too bad you're too small, Nyla joined in while the others laughed. It's not funny, Tinka said under her breath as she stood on a pebble on her tiptoes stretching to see just a tiny speck of the spider. But as much as she tried, she couldn't see a thing. Just then, Sooty came in for a rough landing. He knocked her right over. Whoa, sorry, kid, he said. Hey, Sooty, can you see the purple spider from up there? Tinka asked. I sure can, pal, Sooty answered. When I fly, I can see for a million miles. I wish I could see him too, Tinka said, all dreamy-eyed, or visit. Why, if I could visit him, I'd trot right up and tell him he is the most spectacular spider in the whole world. And then she sighed. Too bad I'm too little. I could never even get past the chicken coop. Little Schmittle, replied Sooty, and he scratched his wing. He looked at his feet. Well, I guess I just have to check out this Mr. Spider myself, he said at last, and he took a running start and launched himself into the air. Hey, Tinka called. Without a thought, she leaped as high as she could after her friend. Take me with you. I'm small enough for you to carry me. If you insist, Sooty said, swooping back down. Hop aboard, kid, and hold on to your hooves. Up, up, and up. The two friends flew until they were high above the barn and it looked tiny and the sheep looked even tinier. The fields spread before them like Tinka's quilt back home. I feel bigger than the biggest sheep there ever was, she cried. And then she saw him, all huge and purple and dancing in the wind. Right below Tinka was the spider and the other sheep were right he was beautiful. But the closer they flew, the less he looked like a spider. And the more he looked like thousands and thousands of tiny flowers. 
Sooty landed right in the middle of the purple flowers where the smell was sweet and the bees flew from blossom to blossom. Hey, this isn't a spider after all, Tinka shouted. Wait till I tell those silly sheep. Back at the farm, the others were starting to wonder where Tinka had gone. Look, her little bed is empty, Myla noticed. She probably ran away, said Melda. Oh no, I hope it wasn't something I said, whined Welda. Nobody listens to you anyway, muttered Nyla. In the spider field, Sooty and Tinka were having a wonderful time. Hey Sooty, I'm the world's only flying sheep, she laughed. After a long day at play, Tinka started to get tired. I might need to go home, she said. Sure thing, kid, Sooty agreed. He made her a delicate crown of purple flowers, picked her up, and together they took off once again. As they passed over the quilty fields, Tinka realized that she was looking forward to the comfort of her own bed. They landed next to the barn, and Tinka thanked her best friend for the amazing ride. Then she snuck under the barn door and tiptoed past the big sheep, who were just nodding off to sleep. Myla was the first to hear the little hoofsteps, and she whispered, Is that you, Teensy Tinka? Yes, it's me. I'm back from a trip to see the purple spider, Tinka whispered, holding back a giggle. The purple spider? All four sheep sat right up and eyed her excitedly. How on earth did you get there? Was it scary? Why don't you sleep here with us and tell us all about it? We'll be careful not to squish you. But Tinka only smiled and politely said, I'll tell you everything in the morning. And then she headed off to the corner of the barn. Her little bed was cozy and warm, and best of all, it was her very own. Our last book for today is called Hide and Sheep by Andrea Beatty and Bill Mayer. Wake up, wake up, Farmer McFick. You've sheep to shear and clothes to knit. Your sheep have grown restless. They're jumping the gate. Now wake up and find them before it's too late. Ten frisky lambs run away to the zoo to meet an okapi, a kind kangaroo, a spotted giraffe with his head in the trees. They hang out and play with the wild chimpanzees. Can you find all 10? Nine, join the circus and dance with a bear. Get shot from a cannon and fly through the air. Like woolly white comets, they soar ever higher. They take one last bow from atop the high wire. Play ball, cries the umpire, as eight sheep trot in. They nibble the outfield and sheepishly grin. They know it's forbidden, but munch all the same. With three chomps, they're out of the old baseball game. Seven sly lambkins are eager to go. They sneak to the village to take in a show. Alone in the dark with their favorite flick, they gobble down popcorn until they feel sick. Six clever sheep in the new art museum. Some pose like a statue so no one will see them. Hooves click on marble. They dance and they play with Salvador Dali, Van Gogh, and Monet. Five groovy lambs hit the beach for the day. With surfboards and snorkels, they're ready to play. They do the beach boogie and try to get tanned. Like all of the tourists asleep in the sand. Four hungry ewes run off looking for snacks. They roam the library inspecting the stacks. Novels and poetry, all of it free. They nosh and they nibble from A down to Z. Three naughty sheep on a tour of the town stop by to visit with Fireman Brown. When the tour is over, those wicked lambs hide. They crank up the siren and go for a ride. Two silly brothers with nothing to do find an old bicycle built just for two. They zoom down the sidewalk so fast and so free. Don't look where they're going and land in a tree. 
One little lamb with its snow-colored wool follows young Mary and heads into school. The farmer comes creeping. It's too late to run. Clip, clip, and snip. Now the shearing is done. Hip, hip, hooray for Farmer McFit. Your sheep are sheared, their clothes are knit. You've dressed your flock from toe to head. See all their clothes? Now stop counting sheep. It's time for bed. I hope you enjoyed our sheep stories today and we will see you next week.